Welcome our guest speakers, Jello and Joanna from 105.1 The Bounce. Let's give them a warm round of applause. That was better. Uh, how you guys doing? You guys good? Okay, so basically they told me I'm supposed to give you guys my entire spiel. Okay, but you gotta condense it. Condense it of how I got in the radio, okay? But before I do that, I want to let you guys know this is uh, our thing. We're doing 105 Random Acts of Kindness because radio is no longer about talking on the microphone. You also have to be a part of the community and try to give back. So this is number 21. We decided that it was going to be random, whether it was taking somebody's dog out for a walk, whether it was buying somebody's gas at the gas station, that we were going to give back to the community no matter how big or how small. This is number 21. So you guys are number 21. Yes. Round of applause to you guys. <laughs> for uh, letting us come out and, and be a part of uh, your high school radio program. Now, I started in radio. Here's the thing about you and me. You, got a, you have an upper hand right now because I didn't do this. I didn't go to school for radio. And it took me a lot longer to get to where I am today. You, you are in radio. So you know what radio is. You know the ins and the outs. You know the equipment. You know how to talk. You know how to smile while you're on the radio. So when you get in the radio, just know you're already there. See, for me, I started as an intern. I wanted to be in radio since I was knee high to a fly's eye, about this small right here. See that? Yeah, to a fly's eye. Everybody see how small that is? We see. So when I was in eighth grade, I used to listen to this guy on the radio. His name was J Times 3. And in my mind, J Times 3 was the greatest radio personality on the face of the planet. You know, he'd get on the radio, hey, what's up, man? It's J Times 3, blah, blah, blah. And he'd yell, but his energy was just infectious. You felt it. You wanted to be a part of it. So I would record J Times 3's show, and I told myself that I wanted to be on the radio at all costs, no matter what I did. So I was 22 years old. I live in Arizona, working at the state of Arizona. It was a great job, a great pension plan, going to school. And I applied for an internship at one of the Heritage Hip Hop stations in Arizona, which was Power 98.3. I didn't think I would get the job. I had no radio knowledge, no radio history. I just knew I wanted to be in the building regardless. So six months later, they call me back and say, hey, we have an internship program. As long as you're going to school, you can come and do the internship program. It's about three months, but it's an internship class of about 20 people. I was excited. So excited that I quit my job. My girlfriend almost broke up with me. I had a, a kid at the time. I had a, a, young, a young daughter who's 16 now. And I almost lost my, my entire relationship because I wanted to be on radio that bad. It was something that I wanted to do, right? So I got into the internship program. There's 20 guys in there. I want to shine. I want to outshine everybody because I want this job. I want to get in here. So I would go and take stickers, you know, the stickers that you see outside the walls. I would take those stickers and I'd run in the middle of the street and I'd slap them on vehicles. Pow, 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 pow. I almost get hit by a car. Get out of the way. People were honking me. They cursing me. All I wanted to do was stand out. That was the number one thing. I just wanted to stand out to the people in charge. Two weeks later, guess what? Can you guess what happened? Mm, they let you go. Two, two <laughs> weeks later, what do you think happened? I got the job. Two weeks later, I got the job because I wanted to stand out. So when I got in the radio, there was no more looking back. I started as an intern. I got hired in promotions. I did promotions for two years. Um, there was a radio personality, and she was also the program director at the time named Carly Hustle. She was sick one day. I was doing an event with her as a promo rep, carrying the equipment. She was sick. She couldn't do it. It was a PlayStation remote. And she's like, I'm sick. I can't do it. I was like, well, I can do it. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I, I wanted to do it. So I got the microphone, had the parents laughing, had the kids laughing. The very next day, I was on the radio. The very next day. It was my passion. It was my drive. It was what I wanted to do. So I did weekends. I did overnights for an entire year, midnight to 6 a.m. every single day. Weekends, I didn't have one day off. It was something I was dedicated to doing. I wanted to be in radio, continued to work my way up, did, became a morning show producer, did weekends, finally got a night show. I've done afternoons, I've done mornings, and now I'm here with this lovely young lady. <laughs> so I say that to say that I, there's so much more to that story, but I, I really wanted to be a part of radio, so I dove into it and I did everything that I possibly could to get to where I am. And now I'm here with Joanna. Would you like to tell me your spiel? I will, I will. Hi, I'm Joanna. Um, I, after high school, our high school didn't have anything like this, and at the time I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and I went to Michigan State, graduated from Michigan State, got the normal business job for a long time, and I realized I wanted to get into broadcasting. And I went back to Specs Howard, which I know a lot of us around here have. Um, did the one-year program, loved it, loved it, loved it. At that time, I was doing uh, TV and radio. Um, I got an internship immediately on my own through networking. 
um, at a sports station, not the ticket, but it was Detroit Sports 105.1 at the time, working for Drew Lane, who was Drew and Mike for years and years. And it was such a great experience. Um, I, again, I started like he did as an intern, working for free every day for eight months, no salary, nothing. Worked my way, got hired um, as a producer, and then was doing sports um, updates on the weekends. And through that, I networked, and I'm also doing sideline reporting for Oakland basketball for ESPN TV 20. So if you ever watch Oakland basketball, I'm on the sidelines, which I love. Um, so I do a little bit of both TV and radio. Um, when the sports station closed, I hung around and did some board hopping and did whatever I could to get recognized, and everything worked out. And now I'm with him. She and hates so, me. and yes, I, I mean I like him this much, but I hate him this much. Um, and we're on from three to seven. It's honestly the best. Radio is so fun, but you work your butt off. You really work your butt off. I mean, we're not just three to seven. We're nine to eight. I mean, we go in early. We show prep. We shoot videos. Now with social media, there's so much that you can do that you're not just on the air. You're on every social media: Instagram, Facebook, everything we do. We video. So. It's a whole day job, it's fun, but it's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding. We get to talk to you guys, we get to interact with the community. It's, it's really a lot of fun. So that's my little, my little spiel. There's always a spot for everyone, whether you're like, obviously he is super outgoing, super talkative. I'm like a little bit down from that. I don't talk as much as Jello does. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always like a spot in even like producer roles where they get a chance to be on air and they're not like the main person, but just their personality. It doesn't have to be you're the most outgoing or the most talkative, but there's always like a little, you know, area for everyone. So you got the lead host who's the larger than life personality, over talks, super loud, stinks all the time, doesn't Another respect one? anybody else on the show, right? That would be me. <laughs> so then you got Joanna who's also my co-host, but she's say if, if my level's here, with the blah, she's kind of just here, blah. And then you have a producer who's just blah. <laughs> yeah. But they add a different element. Yes. They add such a, a quirky, cool little element and it gives people a different voice because you got to understand, there's tons of people who aren't super per people person. There's tons of people who are quiet. You got to remember when you're on the radio, you're talking to real people. Mm -hmm. You're not just talking to yourself. So there's going to be somebody on the radio who's, I don't know if you're like that, but they're just like you who are just, you know, hey, what's up? What's going on? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> and they would love that. They love yeah. that because they get sick of me right. and then they get sick of her. People do get sick of you. And they <laughs> shut up too. And they want, they want those different personalities. So there's, there's places for you all over mm -hmm. the place. Don't think because you're not like uh, uh, um, me or you're not a, a loud, talkative per people person that you still can't have success. Right. Because a producer is just as much a part of the show as well as putting together the show. And producers are the one, they're, they're the one. The producer is the one, believe it or not. People don't reach out to me, they go to the producers. Like if they need something, they talk to you. They don't even talk to me. They hate me sometimes. <laughs> but they'll go to her. You, you play such a crucial role into the way everything is ran that you don't have to be like the, the lead host mm -hmm. or anything like that. So. Thank you guys Thanks, for letting us guys. come out. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. We really yeah.